Okay, let's look at worked example two. A four-cylinder petrol engine, that's the driver for the coupling, delivering 180 kilowatt, running at 3,200 revs per minute. Right, there's the petrol engine. 180 kilowatt, 3,200 revs per minute. Drives a metal press via a 7.5 to 1 reduction gearbox. Here's a gearbox. I've assumed the inefficiency of 90% and the speed is reduced by 7.5 five times. The gearbox output shaft has a diameter of 130 millimeters and the metal press has an input shaft diameter of 180 millimeters. Okay, there's the output shaft of the gearbox, diameter 130 millimeters and then the Output shaft from the coupling to the metal press, 180 millimeters. There's our coupling. All this information is vital. The expected parallel misalignment is 6 millimeters, and the maximum end float is 4 millimeters. The drive is expected to operate 20 hours per day. Okay, there's the metal press included. Let's look at the end float and parallel misalignment okay we have a parallel misalignment which is the maximum of six millimeters and the end float is four millimeters you can see the shafts are misaligned through by the centers the distance is six and then the end float is where the shafts will move forward and backward for four millimeters maximum apart machine will operate at 20 hours per day. Now let's look, look at the loading calculations. Loading calculations and service factor. Now before we go any further, let's look at the type of coupling we are busy selecting. This is a Fenoflex coupling, where you have your input shaft uh, that is keyed to the flange on the outside. And there's an array of bolts. This part is a rubber type of uh, contraption. This is called a tire. And you can see that's the section view. So this coupling is widely used when it comes to flexible operations in, in many types of machinery. However, there are other types of couplings. You have rigid couplings as well. It doesn't have this flexibility. Flexible couplings can ha handle more misalignment than rigid couplings. Okay, our driver is an internal combustion engine our driven machine is a metal press class 3 the amount of hours of operation under internal combustion engine is 16 and over we are running at 20 hours per day thus we will have a selection coming down from 16 and across from class 3, we're having 2,5. That is our service factor. Okay, the service factor is a safe type of safety factor that is used by some manufacturers to allow for safe loading of their products. So we've selected 2,5. The reasons are internal combustion engine, metal press, and operating at 20 hours per day. Now looking at design power, we have safety factor times the gearbox power that will be calculated now. Speed of the engine over the reduction is thus equal to 426.72 revs per minute. We have the power of the gearbox is equal to the efficiency times the power of the engine. Thus the power that goes into the coupling is 162 kilowatt on the 130 millimeter shaft 
the speed is 426.72 rev min. Power design is equal to 405 kilowatt. Now let's look at the maximum torque and the nominal torque. Maximum torque is service factor times the torque nominal. Nominal torque is 30 times the power of the gearbox over pi times the speed of the gearbox. Equal to 3625.72 newton meters. With a maximum torque equal to 9064.3 newton meters. The maximum torque is what the manufacturer specifies that the coupling can handle if you select it right. The nominal torque is what the coupling actually operates on. That's why the engine power actually contributes to the coupling. Preliminary coupling selection. Looking at the coupling size table. Between 400 revs per minute and 500 revs per minute. That is where our speed falls in. We will be looking at both of these at the same time. For 400 revs per minute, the power greater than the design power of 405 kilowatt is 486. For the 500 revs per minute, we have 488. This leads us for uh, the 400 as a F220 coupling and the 500 we have a F200 coupling. Thus our preliminary coupling selection is an F220 for 400 and F200 for 500 revs per minute. Characteristics check. Looking at the physical characteristics table, we will be looking at the maximum speed in revs per minute, the nominal torque in newton meters, the maximum torque in newton meters, maximum parallel misalignment in millimeters, and lastly, the maximum end float. With these five checks, you can make an adequate selection and a successful coupling selection by just using these five in most cases. Drawing up a table to do the physical characteristic check, we've got decision on the far right hand side, required or calculated, F220 coupling, F200, and then in the last column it says physical characteristic. Starting with torque nominal, and the next is the maximum torque, maximum speed in revs per minute, the maximum parallel misalignment in millimeters, and of course the maximum end float in millimeters. Now let's evaluate all of these characteristics. You're going to write down what is given from the supplier, and then we're going to do what uh, write down the calculated, or required and then make a decision. There's a nom nominal torque for both the F200 and F220. What have we calculated? 3625.72 Newton meters. Is this okay or not? Since both are can handle higher than the calculated or required, we will write down okay, we are happy with that type of result. Next is the maximum torque. Our calculated was 9064.3 and what the manufacturer gives that their couplings can handle is 23,508 for the F200 and 33,165 for the F220. So we are happy with that result. Okay, that's our approval. Next, maximum speed. One can see that the speed that it can handle for the F200 is 1300, for the F220 1100. And what we've calculated or what the coupling needs to run it is 426.66 revs per minute. And therefore, okay. 
parallel misalignment. The F200 can handle 5,3 and 5,8 can, can be handled by the F220. We require 6 millimeters of misalignment that it can handle. Therefore, it's not satisfactory and therefore not okay. Maximum end float. Couplings F220 can handle 6.6 millimeters F and the F220 7.3. Sorry, the F200 6.6, the F220 7.3 and what we require is 4 millimeters. Therefore, it's within spec and it's okay. Now let's revisit the maximum parallel misalignment. We know that the F200 and F220 cannot handle that type of misalignment. So the next thing to do is to go to the next higher coupling and see what it can handle. Let's look at the F250. So the F250, looking at the maximum parallel misalignment going across, we've got 6.6 .6 millimeters. And that's more than required. We require only 6. So we will select our 6.6 .6 millimeters F250 coupling. All the other characteristics are in check, like the maximum speed, the nominal torque, the maximum torque, and of course, the end float, which is 8.2 millimeters. The coupling selected after the characteristic check is the F250, the 6.8 mm parallel misalignment that it can handle is more than what is required, which is 6 mm, and therefore it's okay. Key check. Looking at the dimensions of Fanaflex flanges uh, types B, F and H table, going right through to the bottom, we can see to the left hand side we have F40, F50, F60, we're going right down to the bottom to F250. For each coupling, one can see that we have types. We get three types of couplings, which is the B, the F, and the H type. For our 250, we only have a type B. Looking at these three drawings on top of the dimensions of Fenaflex flanges types uh, table, we can see that we're having a type A, type F, and a type B. These two couplings are fa fairly similar. They use bushes, but this one is smaller in length. You can see that the E distance there in the E distance there, differently. So when you have space constraints, both of these might handle the same torque, and you can choose the one that will fit in more adequately, which is the type H. But now we, are, we will be looking at the type B, and the type B coupling has no bushes. It just utilizes a key. The key length here at E can be looked up on the table where we have type B we can look at the E value there and that's the key length next to it is types F and H their E value is just underneath so following the type B column downwards to F250 we have an E value of 132 that's the, the key length that this coupling can handle the maximum. Now if you've calculated a key length of 142 that you need, you will need to go look at another type of coupling. But if it's less than 132, you're still within the required specification. So the key length is 132 millimeters for the F250 type B. And if you've calculated a key length to transmit your torque through the coupling, 
let's say 100 millimeters you can just write okay next to it because it's greater the 132 is greater than 100 millimeters bore check the bore check is featured on top of the table we'll be working with metric bore sizes going downwards to the f250 we have a maximum bore of 190 millimeters we can see that the f250 type b bore is equal to 190 millimeters max our shaft sizes are 130 millimeters 180 millimeters required thus it is okay because 190 is greater than 130 and 180 respectively specification write up in this section we will write out a specification to order from this specification will help you to order the correct part numbers from the manufacturer when you order the coupling you will need an f250 b bore to 130 millimeters on the one side and bore to 180 millimeters on the other side that's the end of our specification if the f250 b does not satisfy the requirements the design requirements it is then necessary to go, go look for other type of coupling and then follow the catalog of that manufacturer to see if you can get the coupling for the required shaft sizes the minimum and maximum torques the nominal torques the bore sizes the key length the parallel misalignment the power and the end float thank you very much